opened up the club for the entire team party. Um, uh, we, our core values are fiscal responsibility, free market, uh, and upholding the Constitution. Those are our three main core values. And we accept everybody and anybody. We do not discriminate. We've got Democrats, Independents, Republicans, uh, all types of folks in our party. And hopefully, if you're not part of our Southern Tea Party, you will be after tonight. Oh, thank you, John. Um, our main goal is to educate and inform like we're doing tonight, and also to remind every one of us U.S. citizens that we are responsible for participating in our government and getting our voices heard, which is what we're going to do tonight. Dr. Paul goes to here. Thank you. Nice, Robin. Thank you. Thank you very much. You Well, thank you. This is, uh, I've been amazing. Um, I hope you don't mind I walk around. Uh, my mom always said that I had St. Vita's dance. <laughs> and so, uh, and now I found out I got a tail. <laughs> but no. Um, so I enjoy walking around. It kind of makes me at ease. So if that bothers anybody, I'll try to, to be a little bit better. But thank you very, very much for taking the opportunity to come out and talk. Because what I'd like to try to do tonight is tell you what I see and what's been going on from my vantage point, tell you what I see is happening and going forward, and then listening to you. Because that's what we have to do, is we have to listen to America. That's, that's where we were going. So I guess I'm, I'm your Waldo. For all of those of you who know missing me, um, I live in my office. And everybody back there seems to think it's something genuine or something new. Um, but there's about 60 members of Congress who live in their office. Wow. It just seems that everybody wants to know what and how I do things. Uh, I, I cook for myself because I'm allergic to wheat. Um, but we had to draw the line finally, is that the Japanese and the Korean um, television uh, newscasts wanted to come and watch me wake up in the morning. <laughs> we had to say, no, that's not a pretty sight. Yeah. And if you were watching, we had Senator Boxer that was kind of, uh, kind of ticked that we were actually living in our own office. But I will tell you, the, the options were going to be a little bit worse because I have a pup tent, and we were going to end up over on her office on her lawn, and we had found a rubber opossum, and we were going to put it on a spit. <laughs> and I had two other congressmen that were going to join me. So I think it's better left unsaid that we stay in our office. <laughs> Folks, thanks again for coming out. And I want to tell you, and the first story I'm going to tell you actually happened to me the very first day I was in office. And I'll tell you what I believe is what most of us believe, what's going on in Washington, D.C. So we're going to start by a question. How many federal groups of people does it take to hang a big screen television? A million. Well, it would be amazing. It's seven. Seven groups of people. And I have to go through it painstakingly because you'll have to understand what's at fault here, what's wrong. The first gentleman came in my office and put a mark on the wall. And he said, sir, are you happy with the mark? I go, I don't know what the mark is all about. But if it's the center of my television right on that wall, I'm happy with it. So you're happy with the mark. I said, I guess I'm happy with the mark. So he leaves. He leaves. A second guy comes in and he goes, so are you happy with the mark? I go, well, the last guy asked me about the mark. I'm happy with the mark as long as it centers the television and that wall across from my desk. I, it, by the way, the television is sitting on the, on, the, on the table. So I'm busy taking it out. He goes, oh, no, 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 that's not my job. I'm just quality control. So then in comes three more. And they come in and they put the brackets on the wall. This time I've got it all uncovered and I'm getting ready. No, 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 that's not our job. Then four more came in. And by the way, in between each of these steps is a minimum of 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then four more came in, and they actually put the television on the bracket. Didn't hook it up. Then three more came in, and they actually hooked it up but didn't plug it in. Then two more came in and plugged it in to make sure it worked. And by the way, the second guy that came in the second one came back in and said, are you happy with the work? I go, I'm really happy with the work, but I'm going out to buy my own drill set. That's exactly what goes on in Washington, D.C. It is amazing. And the comment is, is what, I most, what I most see in Washington, D.C. is I knew it was dysfunctional. I just didn't realize it was this dysfunctional. But that gives you an idea of what's going on in Washington, D.C., a lack of common sense. 
So everybody comes to my office and borrows my drill and my tool set. <laughs> Hopefully we're saving you a dime here or there. So with that being said and what we're going to talk about tonight, I would like you, through our whole discussions, is think about through your lifetime. Think about what America meant to you, what opportunities America gave you, what you have reaped from America, and how this country has always answered the call. Because I want to talk about that. It's called debt. It's the most imminent danger that we face in our country. We are right now at $14.3 trillion in debt. That's so many numbers, I can't even see it straight. We're no longer talking about billions, we're talking about trillions. Somebody went crazy with a credit card. We did. We all did here. So this is our problem. And just so, no, it's all of us. It's every single one, not just these, it's ours. All the way across the board. So, but let's put it in perspective. Let's take every millionaire in the country, just to give you a defining moment about what this deficit is all about. Take every millionaire and above, take all their money and liquidate it. It ends up representing 100% of the gross domestic product, which is how we measure things. We are in debt 900% of gross domestic product. Wow. Let's talk about taxes. You want to tax our way out of that? The lowest tax rate and we can't even make it up, would be lowest, the lowest would be 66%. The lowest, everybody in. So folks, these are not rational ideas by themselves. And by cutting programs, you can't get everything. You have to have something else. It's called jobs. You gotta be putting, putting people back to work. So we're gonna go back and look at this budget and have a discussion about what's going on and why things occurred. This is a budget from 2010. So the closest thing that we can come because we've been doing a CR for 2011. The last Congress failed to do a budget, the first time since 1974. It failed to do it, we kicked the can down the road. In my world, if you did it, you own it. It's your problem. Unfortunately, we inherited it. But this is the breakdown, okay? And it's important because we're gonna discuss what a continuing resolution is and what a budget can do. Now in a continuing resolution, you are limited to two pieces of the pie. This green one here, called non-defense, discretionary income, and defense. You cannot do anything else with these other cores. That is all you're limited into a CR, or continuing resolution. Okay? The second part of a CR, continuing resolution, is you cannot legislate. Which means, for an example, if I were to take some money from one program and put it over in another program, I can't do that. All I can do is cut. So these are where the cuts came in this CR. Okay? And we want to focus on that. Okay? And this is based on about a three and a half trillion dollar budget. T with a T, not with a B, trillion. Lots of zeros. Okay? So let's go through the steps. So we have what they call a CR. A House Resolution 1. This speaker has done something very new. Because it wasn't done in the last Congress. In fact, it hasn't been done for quite some Congresses. It's called an open rule. An open rule is that anybody can bring an amendment. Anybody. Independent, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative.